Joe Rotella, and Joe is the tool guy, and you are going to help us carve stamps out of something I've never even heard of before. Well, you know, traditionally, stamps are carved out of rubber, and I'm a little bit scared of that because the tools are really sharp, and I hold my hand, and I'm going to go through my hand. And So instead, I found that phenolic foam works phenomenally well for this. It's really soft. It comes in three different densities, 5, 10, and 20 pounds per cubic foot. And the 5 pound is so soft, we can carve in it with a toothpick. I see I have a bunch of tools, of, of exciting tools here. I've got a popsicle stick and a, what looks like a wooden stick and a paddle and a pencil and I've even got a fancy electronic tool. You have yeah. a spoon and a straw, yeah, all just, sorts of stuff. So the thing is we can start by taking a design and drawing mm -hmm. it on the block or I like to draw on paper and then use carbon paper to trace it and go over it. Or you can just go freehanded, and because it's so soft, this can was I my. Can I just start stabbing yeah, things? This was my dad's pencil, and I like that shape, so I can just punch it in there, and make Ew. that shape. How cool is this? And I like that, you know, you can just be random to create textures that you're later oh going to stamp with. You know what I think is so cool? So I have carved hundreds and hundreds of stamps, and you know, I carve stamps constantly. I, I have never been able to simply poke a square. Thing in into I mean like I can't believe how perfect this square is. This is gonna make this is gonna make all stamp carving super duper easy. <laughs> Isn't it cool? I like and of this. course you can write. You know, use a tool. I'm using a. a Ooh, it's so but like it really tool. goes in. You know, this is pretty darn cool. I do feel a little bit like oh my gosh that line is so thin that you're getting. And I do think that sometimes when you're carving stamps or making patterns of any kinds, it's nice when you mix up those fat and those thin lines. This makes me want to try like everything in my house to see how it's going to go. Okay, I'm going to go for the electronic one. You're going to use a power one. tool. Oh, yeah. So that's going to give you a very fine line. Okay, let's see what I can do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is like butter, as they say. It woo, is, it woo, is. But woo, the cool part woo. is, it's also incredibly smooth. So it's going to take paint and ink really, really, really well. Let me. I'm going to reach in front of you and get a cookie cutter. Okay. You know, I'm not even making a pretty pattern here. I'm just playing. All patterns are pretty. That's the way I think of it. There is no such thing as an ugly pattern. So when it comes time to stamping. It. Yeah. If we want to, we could seal this with an acrylic medium. Oh my first. gosh, what a cool pattern you got. It, you know, Look at it this. looks a little bit almost like a cell or something like that or some kind of drawing. And it's if you're really worried cool. that it's not smooth enough, just hit it quick on a piece of sandpaper, hold it flat and go like okay, that. Okay, so how do I know I have all the inking stuff I've stolen it over here. You've would you like would it. you like the inking so palette? Let's use this this one actually is so cool because it's the end of a can opener. <gasps> That is super cool. So now you're going to start looking at, of course, all the objects in your house exactly. slightly differently to think of the different ways that you could paint. use them. Well, this is ink. It will work with paint. It'll work with ink. I'm going to just put a bit out here on our tray. Can you use regular stamping ink with it, or does it need to be like block printing no. ink? Well, I like the block printing ink because I like to apply it with a brayer rather than use an ink pad. Oh my gosh, when I teach stamp carving, one of the number one things that people always ask me is how to get perfect circles, and the answer is now, poke a stick in it. Poke a stick in it. I mean, I'm serious, <laughs> look, those are perfect circles. So short strokes with the brayer to get the brayer really coated well, and let's take this one. I'm gonna apply it using the brayer. I think the cool thing too about handmade stamps is to be candid, Can you I really give you a don't piece know. Of paper? Yeah, and I prefer to keep the stamp face up and then to press the paper on it. And that's a, the, that's actually the most traditional way of printing is in fact to do it that way. You know, I'm a traditional kind of guy. Are you really? Could you tell? <laughs> So Let's you're going to ready for the I'm reveal. I'm ready for the big reveal. I'm excited. I'm full of anticipation. Oh my gosh. It is absolutely lovely. And I, what I think is amazing is again, here's a design that you either could draw directly on there, you can play around with, you can push things in, you can draw and it's got that thick and that thin line. And you know, if we take it just a second and we look at some of the beautiful samples that you've brought. I know that you said that you can and I think this is a great example here where you can take a drawing and then you just use some carbon paper if you want. So this could also be a coloring book image. It could be something you found on the internet. It could be your child's drawing. It yep, could be yep. anything. And you simply transfer it onto your phenolic foam and then you can carve it away. And again, those thick and those thin lines are so cool. And you can see the prints even on dark paper, which I think is really, really neat. These are adorable. And then of course, not only did you use 
the triangle end of the tool, but you also use the round exactly. end to make that sort of Swiss well, cheese. Well, because once we had it out, it was easy to play with, and it works well. I like the first generation print, uh -huh. but I really like the second generations better. I don't know why. Me too, because I like that ghosty kind of image. And here, you've taken the same circle idea, but simply connected the points, and it looks very, if you look at the finished print, incredibly complicated. Here, you've essentially used this, right, to push well, into this, the I bought foam. this at a garage sale, and I have no idea why but it seemed really it's cool. cool. I had to have this. I think it's cool. And it just was on the table and thought, well, let's just press that in the foam and see what we get. And there you have it. And then an owl you've drawn, again, some cool botanicals, and that almost looks like you printed on fabric. It's mulberry paper, so it's a handmade mulberry paper, and it gives you that soft fabric texture. Oh. And the reason that looks a little, so really mm -hmm. soft, if you will, is because we sprayed the mulberry paper first with a little water, then applied the paint to the foam, then applied the paper, and that water helps spread the ink Based, that the water based is super ink. cool. And uh, now my next question is, by the way, may I print my stamp? Oh yeah, let's may see I, what you can got. Can I see what I actually did? Because this is one of the things that's exciting. This is also one of the things that I like so much about creating with someone else. I always encourage people that if you can find anybody crafty in your area or maybe travel to a place where there are other people you know who are crafty, the nice thing is I'm now inspired. I had never heard of this idea. I had never thought see? of this idea. And now I feel like this is something I'm gonna take with me and I always find that that happens to me whenever I create with other people. And I like to find somebody who can not only craft, but craft and cook, because then they can bring <laughs> food, and I'm all about the food. You know, speaking of food, now, you brought a bunch of different paper for us to print on, and I just want to talk about, um, this is sort of like a handmade kind of paper. Yeah, like a mulberry. You've got, oh, I'm, I'm such a messy crafter. You've got regular white paper, you've got black paper, so you printed on the kind of mulberry paper. I'm going to give it a try with the give plain try the white. white. Let me make you some space. Thank you very much. So I'm going to use your method where we go ahead, we put it down, and then I'm going to go ahead and rub this. Now while I'm rubbing it, I just want to point out that my brayer, by the way, just so you know, brayers are made out of rubber, and any rubber brayer should never be stored directly on the brayer because it will flatten it out. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. So you always want to make sure that it's never stored flat. I like that one because it has little feet, so I can put it anywhere without worrying like, uh-oh, just got it on the yeah. table. And you can use these mm -hmm. and stamp from the top. I'd put something cushiony underneath. Mm -hmm. See, that Pretty looks like cool a woodblock pattern. print to me. And it does to me. It's soft. And obviously, if I wanted a denser print, I would simply add more paint. I do want to point out that one of the things I think is so nice is, particularly with the owls and the other pieces, is you cut around them. And you could that just makes the print so it doesn't always have to be square. You could also trim the block so it's not square, as yep. you have with the heart. It has a beautiful border. Or you can cut it. So I'm going to take this piece here. I've got a... A big, I got a big this knife. Is a there big you knife. Go. But it cuts pretty easy, and I, I can go see. all the way around. Now I'm separating a lot of material here. Right. I don't but the care thing about is, the, we don't care the about the part, part that's coming off. And I know that you even told me that with a tool see like I this, that. I can go ahead, oh, go ahead and I can just go ahead and shave it into a different kind of shape. And this is even a stamp that I've obviously worked on, but here you go, I'm just shaving away. Look how cool that is. It is, it really, and I can get a nice curvy edge if I can to kind of get a scallop. Now you have one last tip about using your metal tools. Well, anytime you work with phenolic foam, if you use a metal tool, you want to be sure to wash it and dry it afterwards. So just clean, you know, I like to clean and take care of all of my tools, so this is really no different than anything. Awesome. A new way of stamping, I love it.